Hello dear friends of Inside Opera and Classical Music and welcome to a new video. The famous opera by Pietro Mascagni, Cavalleria Rusticana, is the opera that between the sacred and the profane, between Easter celebration and duels of honor, seems really perfect for this period, don't you think so? But first, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. It's a small gesture that costs you nothing, but that is essential for the channel growth. Done? Well, let's go! So, we said Cavalleria Rusticana and religion. Well, of course, Cavalleria is an opera that takes place, background facts aside, within a single day and this day is precisely that of Easter. There are several operas that present religious moments within it, from the Te Deum of Tosca, to the La Vergine degli Angeli in La Forza del Destino. The difference here is that the Christian theme is the frame of the opera, while the opposite takes place inside. It's an opera with strong contrasts. The splendid setting in the countryside of southern Italy in Sicily of the second half of the 19th century and religion are a fundamental part of the opera. It's an essential part of Mascagni's opera, but also of Verga's novel, the story from which the libretto of the opera was then created. The religious element is already found in the names of the characters, from Santuzza, which means saint, to Turiddu, which in Sicilian dialect is the diminutive of Savior, which refers to Christ as the Savior of humanity. The big drama is created because Turiddu loves Lola, and he goes to fight as a soldier. When Turiddu returns, Lola, who believed him dead, married Alfio, the carter. The love between Lola and Turiddu is impossible, but it doesn't stop even when Turiddu engages with Santuzza, anticipating some attention that, according to the Italian and Christian culture of the time, should have taken place only after marriage. So, we have on the one hand marriage, the sacred union, and on the other hand a strong carnal passion between Lola and Turiddu. All this creates a huge contrast and hence the real drama, love beyond the rules imposed by the social convention. The moment of greatest religiosity of the opera is when, from the inside the church, it is heard to play the organ, followed by the inner choir, therefore not on stage, performing the Regina Celi a cappella. The people on stage respond to this song with the heartfelt Alleluia and, as the libretto says, men and women enter and stand in front of the church in a devout attitude. It's a Catholic song with traditional features, serene, sweet, peaceful, what we can define as a classic devotional hymn of Sunday Mass. From here starts a wonderful and majestic song of resurrection, Inneggiamo il Signor non è morto, let's sing The Lord is not dead, a truly ecstatic moment in which you feel the profound belief and spirituality of the Sicilian people with a strong popular style. The melodic line is developed by Santuzza, who guides the whole choir with the singing, towards the apex of this joyful feeling, sacred and folklore at the same time. The second song is on stage, no longer a choir in the church, but as the character of a procession that develops through the streets of the town, where popular tradition, folklore, echoes more than the canonical religious song, in perfect sacred style as it was for the Regina Celi. 
this religiosity is deeply in opposition with other sentiments, much more profane of the opera. We talk about love, betrayal, jealousy and, above all, honor. It is as if after all this echoing of purity, redemption and goodness, one returns to daily life where passions and social obligations prevail. And in fact, after this beautiful song of joyful resurrection, Santuzza remains with Mamma Lucia, the mother of Turiddu, to tell her that he has betrayed her. Mamma Lucia is shocked. It is a revelation that questions sound principles, honor, and following a right religious life. Santuzza, after was dropping this bomb on the mother, putting her song in a very bad light, who in this case deserves it, declares herself damned and asks Mamma Lucia to go to church to pray God to help her, because now she will have to face Turiddu. A mixture of anger, love, jealousy and prayer. This alternation of strong religious faith and strong carnal passions creates a very strong dramatic tension that characterizes the whole opera. In fact, there are many religious references and, apart from the most obvious one we have talked about, such as the celebration in the church and the procession, we find others since from the beginning of the opera in the beautiful Siciliana sung by Turiddu. <laughs> And if I die and go to heaven and I don't find you there, I won't even go in there. In fact, the opera presents from the beginning, immediately after the prelude, Turiddu singing what is perhaps the most profound declaration of love in the history of the opera, because it is the only declaration of love that goes beyond the earthly life. This declaration recalls heaven, and therefore the sacred element, but in reality it plays the love he feels for Lola at the center of all, and makes it more necessary than heaven itself. This in no way means that Turiddu abandons the Christian faith. He is simply overcome by passion, conquered by love, and thus leaves a perennial contradiction, an inner conflict that constantly recurs in the opera. Turiddu's attitude is completely different from Santuzza's. Santuzza is very worried that Turiddu doesn't love her enough. She is worried about her honor and also about the salvation of her soul in case he doesn't marry her. In fact, she has compromised herself. She says, I'm damned. The religious element within the work is not absolutely random, but it is a means to give life to Sicilian rural culture and traditions. But if we think about it, not only Sicilian. The Christian faith is part of a whole system of values and tradition of that world, represented by so much work, family and church. And it is precisely here that we find the apex of the Italian verismo expression, the realism, that brings us closer to these characters and makes us live with them their own conflicts. These conflicts touch precisely what is also the tradition of many Christian countries. It reminds me a bit of the life of my grandparents, where there was a great respect for religiousness, but with many popular beliefs and ways of behaving that needed to be socially shared. 
it's a morality guaranteed by tradition and by respect for the values of the community. A community that at the time, and we remember we are in the second half of the 19th century, is wrapped in religious tradition. The tragedy in the opera is created from the violation of the sacredness of the marriage of Lola and Alfio, not so much for some excessive emotional impulse between Santuzza and Turidu. That, and Santuzza knows it, would be resolved immediately with the marriage. Alfio, Lola's husband, has been informed by Santuzza of the betrayal and confronts Turiddu publicly in a duel to restore his honor. The tragic death of Turiddu is as if it restores the contradiction that we have heard throughout the opera. He did what social conventions define as the right thing, he faced his faults. And shall you explain to me how it can be right for a Christian to kill another one? It is a personalized religion, untouchable, fundamental, but which adapts itself to popular tradition and to the needs of social conventions. It's precisely an obviously desecrating action, such as murder, that re-establishes the sanctity of unions, the marriage of Lola. And I remind you that the honor crime, which seems to be something ancient, was abrogated in Italy in 1981. Incredible! Unfortunately, for what concerns Santuzza's loss of honor, there is no more remedy for that. Turiddu, before going to the duel, in a desperate moment with her mother, asks her to take care of Santuzza, to whom he had promised to marry her, in case something happens to him. Unfortunately, the worst has happened, and Santuzza remains alone and victim of her own request for justice. But with Turidu's death, it is as if the arrows had been expiated, so everything can continue as it should be. To see and listen to everything we have said in music, I suggest you go to see the clip of the film directed by Zeffirelli. I leave you the link in the info box. It's a film of the 80s, where Zeffirelli masterfully expressed the concept of pompous religiosity and at the same time the carnal passion of the protagonists, between altar servers and a procession and quarrels of lovers. A curiosity, the film is set in Vizzini, in the small Sicilian town in the province of Catania, just where the novel by Verga from which the opera was taken is set. I know, it seems like a luck to talk about Cavalleria Rusticana and don't talk about the Intermezzo, but it is a deliberate luck, because it is so rich in deep meanings hidden between the lines that I decided to dedicate a video apart. So, did you subscribe to the channel? But do you know it's free? And remember to activate the notification bell so you don't miss the next appointments. And uh, happy Easter to all!